So, hello, Katerina. Thank you for accepting uh, this interview and uh, for being so willing to help us and uh, share some of your experience with us. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, tell us a little things about yourself and what do you do for a living? Hello, uh, I'm Katerina Boychenko and I'm Associate Professor at the Business Economics and Entrepreneurship Department uh, of Kyiv National Economic University, named after Vadim Hetman. And uh, I hold a philosophy doctor in economic science, uh, but now I'm currently pursuing uh, the degree of uh, doctor in science. It is the highest uh, degree in Ukraine. Uh, my work primarily involves conducting research, teaching, and contributing to various uh, academic and uh, professional activities related to economics and entrepreneurship. Uh, I also actively participate in international projects, engage with academic organizations, and to continuously enhance my skills through training and some courses, and uh, have uh, I have big uh, academic background and expertise lie in economic science, specifically in the area of enterprise economics and integrated development management. And my work uh, involves conducting research, analyzing economic uh, data uh, and contributing to the understanding of uh, various economic phenomena. And I also engage in teaching and mentoring uh, students, helping them uh, uh, to study, uh, to make some uh, research. Uh, and uh, uh, that's all my work, my profession. Okay, perfect. And uh, how did you come to this professional focus? Uh, my journey towards my current professional focus in the field of economic science uh, and uh, integrated development management has been shaped by a combination of academic pursuits, practical experiences and experiences and um, uh, a drive to address involving, uh, evolving challenges in the economic landscape. Uh, it all began uh, with my educational path at my uh, native university, Kyiv National Economic University, and I completed my bachelor's degree in this university with a focus um, uh, on English language. Uh, but after a few years, I just uh, uh, don't, uh, didn't have such uh, huge uh, practice. Uh, but now uh, we uh, understand that um, it's uh, important for, for all researchers, not only for Ukrainians. And this foundational studies provided me with a strong understanding of economics and business principles. And um, uh, as I progressed in my academic and professional journey, I recognized the increasing role of data analysis and uh, technology uh, in shaping economic research and decision making. And this realization prompted me to expand my skill set by participating in various training programs and courses related to data science, IT platforms, and academic integrity. Okay, perfect. And would you like to share a little bit information on how you get into STEM? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? Because uh, of course, that no connection was, yes. Yes, uh, I asked you, like, can you share a little bit of information on how did you get into STEM? Uh, yes. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, I pursued a comprehensive educational and professional journey that provided me with a necessary expertise and skills. And uh, one of these uh, was uh, data science courses. Uh, 
and uh, recognizing the growing importance of data analysis and technology in economics, my field of my researches. And I completed a course uh, in data science to enhance my quantitative analysis skills and to integrate data-driven methodologies into economic research. And of course, uh, the second thing, it, it was IT and academic integrity workshops. Uh, participating in uh, such workshops related to IT platforms, academic integrity and modern um, uh, ICT use uh, enriched my technological skills and understanding of ethical practices uh, in academia. And the third thing uh, is international programs. Uh, I was involved in international programs such as study visit programs and uh, uh, other uh, exposed me uh, to global perspectives and uh, advanced uh, academic practices. And in summary, my educational journey completed by training, research, teaching, experience uh, and en engagement in professional activities has collectively prepared me for my role as a uh, associate professor in the business economics and entrepreneurship de department. But I understood that without some specific technologies, some mathematics, of course, uh, I can't go farther. I can't go uh, to uh, higher steps. I can make higher steps in my uh, development. Okay, I see. And uh, what fascinated you about pursuing this career path so far? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat one more time? Because yeah, no worries at all. Yes, of course. Uh, I ask you, what fascinated you about pursuing this career path so far? What is the uh, like so much are, about it? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, I understand about uh, what you're asking me. Yeah, uh, uh, I, um, there are several factors that have captivated me on my journey along the path of pursuing a career in economic science and academia. And uh, I just want to add one thing that um i have uh um in 2019 uh me and my colleague uh we understood uh that we need uh, to involve students and other researchers and our colleagues to make something that uh, can include some technologies, some uh, data science uh, into our studies for our students. And we made a program uh, which is called uh, uh, Business Economics and Data Science. And uh, it is very popular now at our university. And we hope that for the future it will be popular too. And I think that it was the first step that uh, not only me, but my colleagues uh, began, be, began to uh, such uh, understanding that uh, we need to uh, popularize uh, this thing and, um, uh, and we need to study too not only our students. We need to study, we need to develop our skills and uh, competencies. And uh, uh, there are several factors. And uh, first of all, it is intellectual, intellectual exploration. Uh, the field of economic science offers a continuous avenue for intellectual exploration and discovery. And the intricacies of economic theories, uh, coupled with the dynamic nature of global economies, have always fascinated uh, me. And uh, um, the second thing is a real world impact. So economics is not conf uh, confined to academic uh, 
discourse, it has profound real world implications. I'm fascinated by how economic research and analysis can shape policy decisions, uh, influence businesses, tra- business strategies, and improve for the well-being uh, of individuals and communities. And contributing to this impact, my um, uh, contributing to this impact by conducting research and educating future economists uh, and business leaders uh, is incredibly rewarding. And uh, there are many uh, factors that uh, influence too. It is uh, interdisciplinary in nature because uh, I was I was. Uh, 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 I was telling about this earlier, and of course, adaptation to change, uh, education and mentorship, integration of technology and international engagement, and of course, research innovation. We can't make some innovations in our uh, methodologies, our research, without using some new uh, technologies without using mathematics in our economics research. And it's very important for for me, especially. Perfect. And now I would like to ask you, uh, what are the future technological development that uh, do you see in your field? Uh, Thank you for this question. Uh, In the field of economic science, I foresee several future technological developments that will significantly impact to the way research uh, is conducted, uh, policies are formulated and economic decisions are made. But we have some key trends I anticipate. For example, big data and advanced, advanced analytics. This is the key of my researches now and the um, proliferation of digital uh, transactions and social media and online platforms generates uh, vast uh, amounts of data. And advanced advanced analytics, including machine learning and artificial intelligence, will play a a crucial role in uh, extracting uh, valuable insights from this data. And economists will leverage these techniques Uh, to analyze consumer behavior, uh, market trends, and economic indicators uh, with uh, unprecedented accuracy. Uh, And of course, uh, we should mention uh, predictive modeling uh, with improved data availability and advanced analytics, uh, economists will increasingly use predictive modeling to anticipate economic trends and outcomes. And this could um, include predicting uh, market uh, fluctuations, consumer preferences, and uh, even potential economic crises. Uh, these insights will enable policymakers and businesses to make proactive decisions. And of course, uh, of course, we uh, should mention blockchain and digital currencies, uh, behavioral economics and technology, environmental economics and sustainability, which is uh, number one for us for today. And uh, of course, policy simulation and visualization. And uh, some maybe aspects of digital trade. Uh, so we have many aspects that we should include in our uh, in our foresight for future. And in essence, the future of economic science will be closely uh, intervened uh, with technological advancements. Uh, the integration of data science, artificial intelligence intelligence, uh, blockchain, and other emerging technologies will provide economists uh, with new tools to analyze complex economic phenomena, inform policy decisions, uh, and contribute to a more informed and adaptive understanding of the global economy. Okay, and from what you have said, I understand that you have a lot of experience but do you believe that there's still something that you want that you want to learn? Uh, 
yes, of course. <laughs> of course, uh, as a lifelong learner, I think that all researchers uh lifelong learners and i'm one of them and there are several areas uh, i'm eager to explore and deepen in uh, my knowledge in uh, both within the uh, realm of economic science and beyond and some of the key areas i still want to learn about include advanced data analytics uh, behavioral economics uh, environmental economics uh, maybe some aspects of digital transformation, policy simulation, and visualization tools. Um, of course, global economic dynamics. Uh, and I think that the main of, uh, of all uh, directions is interdisciplinary studies, because uh, we can't uh, use only economics or only math or only some uh, techniques we should combine them and then we will have some interdisciplinary studies and uh, i think it, it is our future and overall my uh, commitment to continuous learning drives me to expand my expertise in areas that align with the uh, evolving landscape of economics technology and society and uh, embracing new knowledge and skills ensures that uh, I remain relevant in my field and can contribute meaningfully uh, to both academia and uh, the broader community. I think I think I will I will do it in future. I totally agree. And uh, I would also like to ask you, what career opportunities do you see for people who are currently not working in the STEM sector? Uh, certainly, there are uh, several career opportunities for uh, individuals who are not not currently working in uh, a STEAM sector. Uh, but uh, I think if they are interested in uh, transitioning into these fields, uh, they can integrate uh, some technologies to uh, their life, to their uh, professional skills uh, across various interest, industries and uh, uh, as we know uh, STEAM skills across various industries have opened up diverse pathways for non-STEM professionals to make this transition successfully. Uh, for example, data analytics and visualization. Many industries from marketing to finance uh, require uh, professionals who can analyze data and translate it into um, actionable insights. And non-STEM individuals uh, with uh, strong analytical skills can undergo uh, training in data analysis tools and uh, techniques to become data analysts or visualization experts. And uh, for example, uh, if we are talking about some technical writing or communication, uh, effective communication of complex STEM concepts is essential and skilled writers and communicators can uh, bridge the, uh, the gap by working as uh, technical writers, content creators or science communicators who make STEM knowledge uh, accessible to wider audience. Uh, and of course, if we are talking about, for example, environmental sustainability, uh, so addressing environmental challenges often involves STEM knowledge and non-STEM professionals can transition into roles related to sustainability, uh, new, uh, renewable uh, energy and conservation by uh, com complementing their existing expertise with environmental awareness. And uh, I think there are many directions that they can make some transforms or collaborate with people who are in STEM skills, who uh, have them, and uh, the increasing interplay between STEM and uh, various industries uh, offers a wide range of opportunities for individuals uh, from diverse backgrounds to transition into STEM-related roles. With the light, 
with, uh, with the right uh, training, upskilling, and a willingness to embrace new knowledge, uh, non-STEM professionals can successfully embark on uh, rewarding careers in uh, these dynamic fields. Okay, and can you tell me please how could an adult person make a profound step into STEM uh, with an initial investment of time? Yes, time is our main resource. And of course, uh, it's part of our life and making a profound step into STEM as an adult uh, with an initial investment of time requires a strategic approach that maximizes learning and skills acquisition. And uh, I think uh, they uh, need to have some step-by-step -step plan uh, from uh, which they they need to start. Uh, for example, the first step, uh, it can be self-assessment. Uh, you should identify your areas of interest with the uh, STEM. Uh, are you drawn to data analyse analysis, programming, engineering, or any other specific fields? Uh, you should evaluate your current skill set and uh, what transferable skills do you process uh, that can be leveraged in a STEM context. It is the main thing that I think that uh, adult person should understand uh, for, uh, for for himself. Uh, the second step, it can be a set clear goals. What you, what do you, um, you should, you should define, uh, short term and long term goals. Do you want to learn specific programming languages or understand data analysis tools or gain a general STEM foundation? Um, and, uh, during this process, during this step, uh, you need to create a timetable for achieving your goals and uh, you should be realistic uh, about the time commitment <laughs> you can dedicate. Uh, and uh, another step, you should choose a path based on your interests and goals. Choose a specific area within uh, STEM to focus on. And this could be programming, uh, programming or data science or robotics or for example, um, another direction or another, some science uh, in this field. Uh, and after this, uh, you should go uh, step by step to your goal. And uh, I think the main role in this um, can play massive open online courses because uh, uh, you can enroll in these courses from renowned uh, universities or institutions. And these courses provide structured learning and often offer certificates upon complexion, completion. And you uh, can have this certificate and you can show it, uh, for example, when you will, um, you should to, uh, you should to uh, show your colleagues or and other students uh, that you can make it and you have such skills. And uh, of course, uh, there are two, uh, uh, many steps that you can make step by step, step by step. But at the end of all these steps, uh, we should remember that learning in STEM is a journey, not a sprint. You can't just jump and uh, know about everything. So uh, your initial investment of time can lead to uh, profound growth and opportunities. And with dedication, consistent uh, effort and uh, a curious mindset, you can successfully step into the world of STEM and achieve your goals. Thank you for all these uh, clear and uh, useful steps. I just have only one last question for you. Uh, it is about uh, what would you recommend uh, to women that are in the age group of uh, 45 and over, or even younger people 
to participate in the future in the STEM area? Absolutely. Participation in shaping the future uh, is, avail uh, is valuable uh, for individuals of all ages and including uh, women 45 plus <laughs> and younger generations. And uh, I can make some uh, recommendations. For example, uh, the first uh, is that don't hesitate to learn new skills or explore new fields. Many online platforms offer courses specifically designed for mature learners. Uh, and your life experience brings unique perspectives and consider mentoring uh, younger individuals or join advisory boards uh, to share your wisdom. And uh, technology is uh, increasingly important in all aspects of life and uh, uh, familiarize yourself with digital tools, social media, and online communication platforms. And of course, don't forget about networking because um, you can engage with professional networks, both online and offline, and what networking can lead to opportunities, collaborations, and new experiences. And of course, stay healthy. Uh, maintaining physical and mental well-being is crucial and healthy body and mind enable active participation in all areas of life. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. And I think it's really nice to hear your perspective from your field. And really, thank you so much for being part of this interview. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful for you uh, for this interview. And uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, be a part of your project, of your interviewing. Thanks so much. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.